So another example of finding areas about the y-axis, a little bit trickier this one, find the area enclosed by the curve y equals x cubed minus 2 and the y-axis between negative 1 and 25. Now you really have to draw this. So hence the reason I've been saying you need to learn your curves, what they look like. It's a very unstraight line, isn't it? And let me rub that out. It's a little bit better. Okay, x cubed minus 2. So it's the cubic curve, but move down to negative 2 on the y-axis. So that point there is negative 2. And the question, it's from negative 1 on the y-axis to 25. So negative 1 is here, so it's meeting the curve that way, up to 25, which we'll just arbitrarily put in there. So it's that whole area that's shaded. Okie doke. Well, there's no problem with that. That's just a straightforward area from minus 1 to 25, apart from the fact we need to make x the subject. So it's y equals x cubed minus 2. So x cubed if we get the x by itself. And the last step is to take the cube root. And easier to do it as a fraction. So therefore it's from 25 to minus 1 of y plus 2 to the cube dy. So this is this rule that's sort of like the chain rule, the reverse chain rule. So the area equals, and it works if you remember, when you've got brackets and you've got an index, and the derivative of what's in the brackets is simply a number. No y's or x's, no variables involved, which is the case here. So what do you do? You add 1 to the index. 4 on 3, and you divide by that same addition, and you times the denominator by the derivative of the bracket, and the derivative of the bracket in this case is just 1, so we don't really need to write it, from 25 down to minus 1. So if we fix that up, we invert the denominator, so it's 3 on 4, y plus Two. Put four on three. Nuts in brackets from twenty five down to minus one. So take three quarters out the front, makes your arithmetic easier. So it's twenty five plus two to the four on three minus minus 1 plus 2 to the 4 on 3. Which equals 3 quarters. So that's 27 to the 4 on 3. Now just be careful, that minus minus doesn't cancel out. Why is that? That's right, because you've got an index there first. So BIMDAS, or BOD mass, except the A means nothing, or bid mass, whatever, tells you that brackets go first. So you got to work out what's in the brackets first, and then indices come next, and then times will divide. So we've got minus, and then in the brackets we've got minus 1 plus 2, which is simply 1 to the 4 on 3, which is still 1. Now what does 4 on 3 mean again? It means the cube root, the denominator tells you what sort of root it is, and then you raise it to the numerator. So it's the cube root of 27, which is 3, raised to the power of 4, minus 1. Any index on 1 is still a 1. So simplifying that, it's 3 quarters times 
Now 3 to the 4th is 81, minus 1 is 80. Okay. Which you can do that in your head. 4 into 80 goes 20 times, 20 times 3 is 60. So it's 60 units squared. You know, it's really bizarre, but on the green background and the black background, I write so much neater than I write on the white background. I'm not quite sure what all that means. However, how about we start combining or using what we know? So the question says, find the area enclosed by those curves and the x-axis. Now, essential to draw this. Let's do a nice big sketch. And often we've got to do simultaneous equations to find the boundaries where these meet. So first curve is y equals x squared. We can draw that one, okay. And the next one is x minus 4 all squared. So you'll remember from our functions chapter, that's a parabola and it's been shifted four units the opposite way to that. So four units on the plus x-axis, something like that. That's the point four. It's obviously zero. So the question says, find the area enclosed by those curves and the x-axis. So if we sketch that, that's that area down here. Closed by those curves and the x-axis. Okay, so to find area, well, we know we've got to find some primitives and do our integration. The problem with this one is that it comes to a point there. Okay, and our techniques don't allow us to, to take that into account. So what we've got to do is split this area up straight down there. So we've got to find the value of that area there and then add it to the other side which means we need to find where this point is, where these two curves actually meet and then we know that we can go from 0 to that point, whatever that is and from that point to 4. Symmetry would tell me and a bit of knowledge tells me it's probably going to be the point 2 but we'll do a simultaneous equation to try and work that out. So, oops, x squared equals x minus 4 all squared. Now your first temptation might be to go and expand the brackets out. We always expand brackets. However, in this case, they're both squared. So why don't we take the square root of both sides, which is legitimate, as long as we take plus or minus. Now you might think we've got to take plus or minus of both sides, and we do in effect, but if you think about it, these are the options. Plus on this side, plus on that side, minus on that side, and minus on both sides, and then those two. A bit like the absolute values. So if you think about it, minus and minus and plus and plus are going to be the same, so we only need to do one of those and one of the other ones where the signs are different. Okay, because if we times or divide by minus 1, then it's exactly the same. So I'm going to take x equals x minus 4 and x, actually minus x equals x minus 4. And we've only got to do it once. So in this one here, so the thing is, these curves only meet once, so there's only one answer. So in the first one, what's going to happen is that the x's are going to cancel out. So there is no solution there. But in this one, it's a minus 2x equals minus 4. And Mrs. Buxton is right. It's at the point x equals 2. So we need to do two se set up two separate integrals, not 2, and then 2 to 4. And the first one's going to be x squared, and the second one's x minus 4 all squared. 
So it's 2 to 0 of x squared dx added to 4 to 2 of x minus 4 all squared dx. Okay. So it's x cubed on 3, 2 to 0, plus, now it might be tempting again to expand this out, but the rule, the reverse chain rule we've got is quicker. So that's what I'm going to do. You could expand it out and you'll get the same answer, but it'll take you a little longer. So it's just x minus 4 or cubed on 3 times the derivative of what's in the brackets, which is just 1, 4 and 2. So we've got 2 cubed on 3 minus 0 plus and then I would take the third out that's down the bottom there and so we've got 4 minus 4 all cubed minus 2 minus 4 all cubed make sure we get our order of operations right so it's 8 on 3 for the first area plus a third of 4 minus 4 is 0 so that cancels out and then we've got minus 2 minus 4, second bracket, is minus 2 all cubed, is minus 8. So that's 8 on 3 plus a third of 8. So it's 8 on 3 plus 8 on 3, which is 16 on 3, or 5 and 1 third units squared. So that's an example of a sum of two different areas where you have to split them up because they might come to a point. In this case, there could be an asymptote or something and it's not a smooth curve. So you have to split them up and then do their integrals separately.